Welcome, um, hackers. I hope you've had a, a good uh, evening or afternoon of hacking yesterday. Um, I'm going to go through some of our uh, planet solutions here and, and talk about some use cases and maybe dive a little bit deeper into kind of the uh, technical perspectives or technical specifications of our imagery. <clears throat> okay, so um, I think Louise mentioned some of this yesterday, um, but I'm going to kind of reiterate it and then and then kind of dive a little bit deeper. So the two fleets that we operate here at Planet are the Planetscope Constellation and the Skysat Constellation. I think you'd all be very familiar now with the Planetscope Constellation as this is the data that uh, you've been using uh, during the hackathon. So the Doves are a very uh, large fleet of four-band imaging satellite that are mapping the entire world uh, almost a daily basis. Um, at 3.7 meter resolution. So these are kind of constantly capturing, there's no tasking involved here. Um, they're just constantly capturing the, the earth. Um, so if you've worked with us recently, you know that there's been kind of an improvement on the planet scope constellation. Um, the super doves were released earlier this year, uh, which means that we are offering currently an additional band. Um, so what was uh, originally a red, blue, green, and near infrared um, constellation, we now offer a red edge band. Um, and actually later or early next year, we'll be uh, launching an eight band product as well. And we currently have about 130 plus of these in orbit. Um, so our SkySet constellation are the high resolution um, product imaging at RGB and near infrared, um, as well as panchromatic. Uh, SkySats are a tasking satellite and offer a sub-daily capture um, globally. Again, we've had an exciting couple of weeks with these. Uh, we've recently launched an extra three um, into orbit, uh, bringing up our total constellation to 21. This is just what the uh, Dove satellite looks like. Um, and I'm sure Dalibor is going to dive in a little bit deeper with this uh, later. But just to, for... Um, uh, reference, this satellite is about the size of a loaf of bread. Um, and this is just some information uh, regarding our Dove Classics, the Dove R with the uh, near, uh, the red edge and our Super Doves. This might be quite useful if you're, if you're hacking a little bit later, so feel free to, to take a screen share. Um, so this slide displays the relative spectral response and wavelength for the spectral bands. Uh, the new bands will allow users to uh, expand their existing applications. Uh, for example, the coastal blue um, can be leveraged for bathymetric mapping uh, due to its response to water, or the red, red edge can be used for um, improved uh, vegetation vitality algorithms because of its response to chlorophyll. So I'll dive a little bit deeper into the sky sets as we've not really mentioned too much of those yesterday. Um, and I'll give a, a quick indication of their, their capabilities. So if you're familiar with our SkySat constellation, we actually used to capture it at 72 centimeter resolution. Um, this has actually been increased to 50 centimeter. Um, in response to market needs, Planet have made the decision to lower the orbit from 500 kilometers to 450. So this, uh, along with additional processing, has given us the ability to deliver this 50 centimeter imagery. Um, the reason we were able to do this is because our skies, and as you can see in the, the image to the right-hand side, they've got four little rockets, uh, which uh, basically allows propulsion on board. Um, so we uh, kind of use this propulsion to lower the entire fleet by 50 kilometers. Um, and this was our roadmap uh, a few months ago. So we've actually now completed this. We have a full constellation of 21 satellites. Um, so I've been talking about like tasking and, and, and bits and pieces like that, but uh, what is monitoring What is uh, and what are base maps? Um, because we've uh, given some base maps for you uh, within this hackathon. So um, with the coverage for our SkySats, our monitoring capability is kind of the best out there. Um, we can image base maps. Uh, as you can see, this base map to the right is of Singapore. Uh, this was captured totally using SkySat over um, a couple of weeks. Um, and as you may know, uh, Singapore is actually a very, very cloudy country. So to be able to do this within a couple of weeks is really quite impressive. 
Um, and this is just an example of how rapid our SkySat constellation is. Uh, the image or the GIF here shows a processing or an oil processing facility in Saudi Arabia uh, following a drone attack. And as you can see, we've captured images from the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, and 23rd uh, to kind of uh, mitigate anything that was happening during these circumstances. This is quite cool. Um, so we've got kind of a crown jewel novel offering, which is video. And I'll just play it for you here. Um, hopefully this works. Uh, the SkySats are kind of unique in their capability to image video. Uh, this is because they use a CMOS framer uh, as opposed to the traditional pushroom sensor. We can actually uh, capture the full frame and a single capture up to 50 frames per second. So the lo location we're looking at here is Nikola Tesla Airport in, in Serbia. Um, what's quite cool is you can actually see an aeroplane um, on the runway right in the middle of the image. But um, something that I'm maybe a little bit more interested in is if you look slightly north of where the aeroplane is, you can actually see the movement of construction vehicles. And this is unbelievably important when you want to, to detect things kind of in near real time. Um, video has also been used for, for various uh, border control, for example, use cases, um, as well as uh, oil refineries, for example, to understand what kind of thing is going on um, in real near time, near real time, apologies. So let's dive into a few use cases. Um, I'm gonna start by talking a little bit about flood management and mitigation strategies. Um, so earlier this year, we were informed of a flood occurrence in Labovia, Serbia, which I believe occurred on the 25th of June. Uh, the damage extent I'll, I'll demonstrate in the, in the following slides. Um, however, what use is a post event image when you can't see what the area actually looked like uh, prior to anything happening. So therefore we dived into our archive of Planet Scope uh, to get some images leading up to the flood. And um, so this is the one from the 15th, uh, the next from the 19th, and then the image on the 24th shows uh, what the river uh, actually looks like following the flood. You can see that it's risen quite substantially. Um, but what you can also see within the, the white boxes um, are two bridge collapses. Um, and this is seen within the, the 3.7 meter planetscope imagery. So what we like to do is use planetscope as kind of a, uh, a tip system. Um, you know, we, we're constantly monitoring with this and the, the planetscope is able to give us a bit of a tip. But then after we found out what's going on on the ground, we kind of wanted to, to task a SkySat satellite to kind of take a little bit of a deeper look. So the next image here is, and we captured this actually within 12 hours of, of kind of getting the information from this image. Um, so it's a little bit cleaner here, obviously it's a 50 centimeter image, um, but then we were allowed to kind of dive in a little deeper and you can really see the extent of the two uh, bridge collapses. Uh, and this kind of information is, is essential for rapid mitigation purposes. Um, my next, Use case will be construction monitoring um, of the Nikola Tesla airport in, in Belgrade. Um, and this is to demonstrate how PlanetScope can be used uh, over a time series to monitor long-term construction projects. And I'm just gonna kind of flick through these images quite quickly because there are quite a lot. But you can see that the um, there's been rapid construction. And if we go back to yeah, between the 27th and 29th, this is over two days. It's quite incredible what can actually happen over the span of 48 hours. And this is over the span of, uh, I believe, just over a year. So I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, illegal deforestation, uh, detection and mitigation. Um, there were a few hackers yesterday, I believe, that were talking about this uh, um, this kind of stuff. So this, the use case will be um, uh, over an area in, in Romania, in uh, the Semenic Chile uh, Karasuli NP. Um, so this contains one of the largest beech forests in Europe. Um, in the recent past, large areas of trees in the protected park have disappeared and uh, satellite monitoring of forest areas can help give governments, um, yeah, help governments to act uh, against illegal logging. 
So the high cadence of our PlanScript imagery allows for identif identification of any violation of protection regulations and uh, increases the chance of catching offenders uh, red-handed. So illegal logging is often characterized by the removal of individual trees and small pa uh, patches. Um, therefore, the holes in the, the forest canopy are clear indication for illegal logging uh, in the protected zone of the National Park. So this image is from uh, July 2019, uh, 2011, sorry. Um, you can see 2012, 2013, 14, 15, these kind of uh, patches seem to seem to be increasing. So the automated forest vitality change detection has been used in order to identify the logging sites and uh, quantify the area illegally harvested. Based on historical imagery from the archive, it was possible to get deep insights into the illegal activity and the size of the forest areas damaged between two consecutive years. Between 2011 and 2015, uh, nearly 517 hectares of forest have been illegally uh, removed um, and only individual sites larger than 0 0.2 hectares were taken into consideration. Um, you know, between 2011 and 2015, it seemed that there were no significant activ uh, activities going on. But once we investigated uh, kind of further down the line, you can see that there's been a huge, huge uh, increase in deforested land. Uh, sorry, how uh, long do I have left, by the way? Um, you have 13 minutes more. Oh, okay. Good to know. Uh, and this is using a forest vitality index to, to show how much uh, damage has actually been done to the, uh, to the forest. Um, and here you can see as vector files, um, the extent of the illegal logged land. So daily, daily imagery bears uh, the potential to stop illegal logging and brings the criminal prosecution to the next level. Activity can be detected timely and criminals can be caught red-handed. And uh, finally, I'd like to talk about the power of base maps um, over uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. So this is a base map from uh, May earlier this year. Um, this is the entire country. And this is the kind of thing that we produce on a, on a monthly basis. And you can see very, very easily how the, uh, the land changes uh, over time. Cool. Um, I may have finished, oh, are we going again? <laughs> Sorry. Cool, thank you very much. Um, I'd be really happy to take uh, any questions as we've got about 10 minutes.